fellow chip dippers. Now, while Family Frantic takes a long overdue break, traveling the globe in search of rare retro tech and TV treasures to share with all of you, call me Indiana Joysticks, we are switching to Retro Recipes Co-op mode. Now, I'll still be sharing regular updates on the Patreon as we travel around the world, but it is indeed those very same patrons that I'm passing the joystick to, and each week one of them will insert their disc into the Retro Recipes drive and share with you their own brand of retro magic inspired by Retro Recipes. I think it's a really great chance to spotlight some of those incredible channels out there, give them this platform and let them share what they can do with you. And this week it is the turn of Pietro and a very special project about backing up my childhood Commodore 64 tapes. So please enjoy this week's Retro Recipes 2 Up Takeover and remember, be kind. No blowing in their cartridges to make them work harder. All right, 2 Up, you're up. Hello, Chip Dippers. I am Perifractic and welcome to another episode of Retro Recipes. Thank you, Perifractic, for offering the opportunity to share our content here in Retro Recipes. And when the chef is not in the kitchen, he needs backup. And speaking of which, this is a box full of nostalgia. These are all the cassettes for the Commodore 64 that I kept with me since I was a kid, carrying these for like 40 years. And if I don't make a backup soon, I'm going to lose them forever. And this got me thinking why I have been carrying this obsolete technology for so many years. So how did I get the Commodore 64 in the first place? Maybe that's where I need to start. And one day I went with my parents to a shop to buy some appliances because we moved to a new place and we needed a fridge, TV, that sort of things. And they were talking with a salesman. And I saw at that time in the shelf all these retro computers, no retro actually, at that time they were current modern computers. I saw all of them there and it came natural to me, like spontaneous and I said like, I want a Commodore 64. And the salesman was there, he got the opportunity. My dad looked at me like, Ugh. and well, they couldn't do, he couldn't do anything about it because he was in sales and the salesman immediately said, yeah, it's good for kids. It's good for learning. It's good for entertainment. Every kid had one. So at the end, there was nothing he could do. It was in sales, it was in our budget. I wanted a floppy drive as well, but that was out of the question. That was too expensive. So at the end, I got the Commodore 64 and I still have <laughs> the cassette that came with it. That 50 games, 50 games in, in one cassette. And well, went home and unpacked it and I started reading instructions. I was 11 years old at the time and immediately start playing with it and spend very late at night. And that's how the whole thing started. To give you an idea of what kind of games do I have in this box, they came in this format here. I grew up in Italy and they were released with magazines. As you can see here is for the Commodore 64, Commodore 128, ZX Spectrum, and there were cassettes back of these games. These games sometimes have only one level or two that weren't complete. Some of them were demos. Some of them, the characters were changed. The names were changed. So I think I have very interesting content in this box and they can get damaged very easily because cassettes are delicate. They're basically made of a film that has a polymer resin that has particles of iron oxide or chromium dioxide that the data get magnetized in there. So you leave them under the sun, gone. You put a magnet, gone. You Humidity, destroyed. They're very, very delicate. So if I don't back up this soon, they're gonna get lost forever. Maybe some of them are already gone, but before we start the backup, let's see how the information is stored in these cassettes. The Commodore 64 tape recorder was this one here, which was called Dataset. The Dataset maybe is one of the most advanced tape storage methods for personal computers of the time. It stores the information twice. That makes it very reliable, but also a bit slower than the competition. The way it works, the dataset internally converts the digital data coming from the Commodore 64 into analog sound recorded in the cassette. And then it's able to convert that back to digital. So the Commodore always deals with digital data. The bits zeros and ones are stored based on the time that the negative and positive voltage is measured. When that change happens, the CIA, not the agency, but the complex interface adapter, registers that as a trigger. The time between triggers is used to determine the zeros and ones, and that's basically how the magic of all of this works. A dataset can be used directly into a modern computer, so it will require a special adapter for that, which I will show you later. But first, let's see how to backup these tapes using a common tape recorder. 
I got this cassette recorder on Amazon which you can connect using a USB cable. This basically acts as if it was a microphone and when you play the cassette you can capture that sound using an application like Audacity or GarageBand or any other similar. It worked pretty well, I was able to restore some games but it's a little bit of a trial and error process because the data is analog and there is a significant amount of signal noise in all this process. Once you have been able to capture the audio then you need to convert it into a file format called TAP which allows you to play it into an emulator like Vice or any other or even in the C64. Unfortunately, most of these programs are only for Windows and they are very old. So if you're a Linux or Mac user like me, it's not gonna be easy. You basically need to run Windows on a virtual machine to run these programs in there or some of them come with a source code so you should be able to compile that for your operating system. At the moment, I'm trying to port some of these programs into macOS, but that is gonna take time. So the easiest way is just to get a cheap PC. You connect a tape recorder into your computer. In my case, I use Audacity, but you can use any other software that you want to capture sound. In Audacity, in the audio setup, you choose the device. In this case, it's gonna look something like this, microphone, USB, microphone, something like that. And then in the audio setup, also the recording channels choose mono. Then from tracks, just add a new mono track. And here we go. Make sure that you have the volume of the tape recorder to maximum. Then we press record and then we press play. There is a little bit of noise here in the signal as you can see and that's a bit unavoidable when playing directly from a cassette like this. And these other parts here that looks completely blue, that's the data basically that is recorded from the cassette. This is a way to recognize that a game started and finished. You can do the whole tape if you want, but in this case we're gonna do just one game. Initially there's gonna be some silence here and then silence at the end and a big pause here. That means this is the end of the program and here starting a new one. This is how it sounds when it starts. And here is in the middle of it. Wow, wow Pietro, Pietro, that, that sound, sound is sound just so nostalgic, nostalgic to me. To me. Oh, oh, I love it. Love it. Uh, keep, uh, up keep up the good work, by the way. By the way. Carry, on. Carry on. Now we select just the bit that we want to export, which is this game here, and go to File and Export Audio. We give it a name and then save it somewhere. Make sure that you save it as mono. Make sure that it's saved as a WAV, no compression, no MP3, anything like that. It has to be WAV and these parameters are the ones that work for me. The next step is to convert this into a TAP file. For that, I use a program called AudioTAP. So far has been the most reliable of all of them. To install it is very easy. You just download the application from here and then you unzip that into a folder. And this is the AudioTAP program. Here you just click on create a TAP file and the TAP file is coming from a WAV file. Click OK select your WAV file, open, and then it's gonna ask you where to save it. I'm gonna save it in the same place, giving the same name, but it's gonna be game one tab. I'm using version one that works so far. Version two didn't work for Vice Emulator. Save, and here you are. Now to play it, we open the Vice Emulator. So in Vice here we go and attach a cassette image, desktop, select it. Look, Star Wars, that's the game. You can go directly here to auto start, which is just gonna load and do the whole process for you. This is gonna take the same time as loading from a cassette because the tab file is a real representation of what is in the tape. Sometimes the tab file is in a bad condition and you need another program called final tab. But this program has been discontinued, the developer is not working on it anymore. Anyway, I use it and it works perfectly fine. The work didn't stop there. It was continued by another application called TapClean, which is very rich in functionality. The link to all these applications are below in the description of the video. Now, as promised, let's see how to connect the dataset directly to our computer. In order to do that, obviously we need some sort of adapter. There are several adapters in the market for that. Some of them, you can build them yourself. For example, this one here, Tape Buddy 64 comes completely with diagrams that you can just build it yourself and create your own PCBs. And speaking of which, you can use PCB Way to get the PCBs directly delivered to your home for just $5. The best PCBs in the market, they will take care of absolutely everything. So you download these diagrams and you get your PCBs. Also they do CNC, 3D printing, and I noticed that in the projects section that they have, there are even some adapters here precisely to use with your data set. And you can order the PCBs directly from there. Because we all know that PCB stands for printed cassette boards, isn't it? 
I already had this adapter here, which basically interface with your dataset, and here is a USB. This makes the dataset look like a microphone to your computer, and you can connect that to Audacity. On the website of this device, there are all the instructions on how to use it. Connect first on the dataset, and then use a USB cable to connect that to the computer. Well, basically what happens is that if we zoom in this area of the audio, as you can see here, this is the analog audio signal coming from the tape recorder, which also includes noise and a lot of other stuff that we don't need. Now, this is the same game recorded with the adapter. Now, as you can see here, it's way cleaner. The beginning, there is no noise. And if we zoom in, we can see that the signal here are all square waves with the digital data. That makes the life of applications like AudioTap way easier and you have a higher chance to get this game restored. What if you only have a normal traditional tape recorder at home? Yes, you can use that too. For that, you will need a cable that has two male 3.5 millimeter jack audio connector. So you connect that on the output of your tape recorder, the same where you will connect your headphones and the other one you need to connect to a device that is able to capture audio. Some PCs have that audio capturing plug or you can use a USB adapter that allows you to do that. The problem with that method is that you will have probably more noise and it's gonna be a bit more difficult to convert that audio file into a tab. Now let's play one of these games directly on the C64. Two thousand years later. Well, it is late at night. I have been doing these backups the whole day and it got me thinking. I have an original Commodore 64. I even still have the original data set that I had when I was a kid. Look at that. How many battles were broken, had to be glued. I even put a switch here to turn on and off the motor because after loading some games, the motor was buzzing and it was bothering me. So I had that switch there to turn it on and off. Why not these years? I didn't spend some time in playing these games. I don't know, probably because we are so busy and we forget that we have these objects that can bring so beautiful memories back to life. These machines, they're not just memories, they're living memories. And that's what set them apart from other relics or memorabilia. They basically demand to be used. And actually to keep them in shape, to keep them working, they need to be used. But now let's play some of these games on the 664. I decided not to test them in the Vice Simulator after doing the backup because I wanted to have the experience of playing them after so many years. I even backed up some of these games here from the 50 games cassette. I don't know where we're gonna find in there. So let's take a look. And now the big moment. Will preserving my childhood tapes in digital form actually work? I hope so. As a way, it is like preserving my childhood itself. On the C64, it is very simple to load the game. Select the USB drive and then select your tap file from the list of files. That's all you need. And yes, it worked. Well, that's a good start. The game already have a syntax error. <laughs> okay, we're listing here the source code of the game. We're not gonna try to fix it now. But imagine at the time, night, you're 11 years old, 1986, 85, and then you just start playing and suddenly you get a, something like syntax error. What is that? Not knowing anything about programming. And I think that's what started that interest, that intrigue about what's behind this. There's something behind the game. And it's not just graphics and things moving around. There is something else. And that was very exciting at that time. Let's try the next one. And yes, this game worked as well. <laughs> this is another game that looks like it was programming basic as well. If it's in basic, you can stop it. And here we have the source code of the game, which as you can see, all the characters look weird is because they basically modify the character memory in order to create the different aliens for the game. And that's why it's impossible to read. I can't imagine myself seeing these at that time. I wanted to know more. I want to know what's going on here. What's behind this? Okay, this is an adventure game. Let's see. You have crashed on the planet Mars, question mark. Uh, I don't know, maybe you know, <laughs> if you say so. You have 24 hours of oxygen left. The only other oxygen is 200 miles away in a supply base. You have one ray gun with four ammunition clips and field glasses. You also have a pint of water with four hands grenades. Can you survive? You get out of your crashed ship and look around. To your west, there is nothing but sand. 
To your east, there are hills. To your south, there is just sand. To your north, there are mountains. Do you want to go north, south, east or west? Let's go north. You are soon climbing up a high mountain. You suddenly slip and fall the hundred feet <laughs> and break your neck. And that's it. And do you want another go? No, thank you. <laughs> Let's try another game. I have this other one here, Bosconia 87. And it was a very clever game because you had to wait for the cassette to load the game. And that was quite a boring process. And that's why you have these colors and stuff to try to show you that something is happening. But this game in particular, it loads a Space Invader just there in the middle of the process. So you don't get that bored. You have something to entertain yourself with while waiting for the game to actually finish loading. It's a Space Invaders, but it's super difficult to play. And here we have the actual game. It looks like it's as difficult as the Space Invaders that we were playing before. It's really hard, this one. Fingers crossed. I really hope this one works. And yes, it worked. And yes, this game worked as well. If I think about it, the feeling is incredible. A piece of my childhood after 40 years has been restored. Well, this is so much fun. I think I'm going to continue the whole night playing these games. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel below and cheerio. One man can make a difference, Perry. Or one woman. Or dog. The Fractics. Lone curators in a vintage world. The world of retro recipes.